Welcome to the convention. My hope for all of you for this event is that it has the feel of sitting at a ballpark with your family and friends or at a recruiting tournament, sitting in the bleachers with your colleagues and just enjoying the moment and the sport that you love. You're a little bit on the edge of your seat. You're also a little bit relaxed and the whole time you're engaged in the moment and have a big smile on your face. And just like a softball game, during this convention, you don't know when the biggest moment is going to be or who will have the biggest impact, but you do know it's going to happen. I'd like to take a moment to remind our softball community just how amazing our sport is. It's so easy right now to focus on what we don't have instead of what we do have. Well, we do have an exciting game. Young athletes are drawn to our sport because it's both fun and challenging. Fans fill the seats in all ba our ballparks and the atmosphere is electric. Record numbers of people watch our sport on TV. We have a product that gets people in the door and then keeps them coming back. We do have awesome people. Do you know that not one speaker, and we have over 100 for this virtual event, took a payment for sharing their time and expertise? Do you know that not one speaker took a payment for the 52 virtual educational offerings we created over the last nine months? Our sport is filled with giving generous people. They truly understand the value of paying it forward by donating their time and talents to help our sport continue to grow. Also, I just think our people are engaging, connected, and a lot of fun. And speaking of awesome people, I'd like to give a special shout out to our NFCA team whose primary focus every day when they go to work is to serve you and to make your coaching experience the best it can be. They are a joy to work with and inspire me to bring my best every day. We do have tremendous leadership within the NFCA. You sure elected quality people for our board of directors. They are willing to not only lead their respective programs, but also this association. Our NFCA purpose is to support fast pitch softball coaches in their quest for excellence while uniting together to advance the sport we love. I am honored to serve alongside this selfless group. Finally, we do have a responsibility. We are the caretakers of our sport. No one cares more about softball than we do. If we want our sport to grow, we will continue to do what it takes to stay on top of the rules of the games, our championships, our commitment to educate ourselves and to show respect to everyone involved. This responsibility is shown in the NFCA Diamond of Ethics. By signing on to be a member of the association, you also agree to our fundamental principles of commitment, respect, integrity, and professionalism. Now we aren't going to be perfect, but if we keep these four core bases um, at the core of everything we do in our sport, our sport will continue to thrive. The diamond of ethics reflects a responsibility to ourselves. And thanks to our trailblazers, our previous leaders, our Hall of Fame members within the sport, softball has been steadily climbing the ladder within the NCAA, the NAIA, the NJCAA, and, and really at all levels. Softball gets to sit at the big table now with sports like football, basketball, volleyball, baseball. We, we don't have to sit at the kids' table anymore. We have done a really good job of taking calculated risks, pushed for scholarships, built stadiums. Um, we've changed rules to enhance the game for players and for fans, and we've enhanced coaching opportunities. How we continue to advance our sport reflects a responsibility to those who paved a way for us and to honor our history. Uh, 2020 brought an acute awareness to many, many things. The value of a hug, um, the enjoyment of competition, the ability to meet a friend for dinner, but none more important than the awareness surrounding race, diversity, and inclusion. Softball has always been a sport that you can be successful no matter what size you are, what shape you are, what socioeconomic background you came from, what age you are, and certainly not what color you are. How we extend our hands and our hearts to make softball accessible to all and respectful to all reflects a responsibility to the future of our game. The softball coaches are resilient people. We chose a sport filled with failure, which gives us so many opportunities to teach our players and ourselves how to bounce back and not just to bounce back, but to bounce back better. 
We understand that a great experience does not mean a perfect experience. Resiliency was a key quality during 2020. And besides resiliency, I'm sure you also noted qualities that brought the most success this year to programs, companies, industries, despite the circumstances. Here are a few that impressed me the most. Proactive and took action. They, they did something. They were transparent. They had a calm confidence. They had not only a positive attitude, but a strong belief. They were creative. They were adaptable. They were balanced. And most importantly, they embraced their people. And I saw many of these qualities demonstrated throughout the softball community in 2020. On top of that, unlike some other sport communities, there was no complaining, no blaming, no demanding. We like to think our softball community is a little different, a little special, and we are. Let's keep it going in 2021. The NFCA set a record high membership number in January. We broke our coaches clinics overall attendance number and hosted three NFCA leadoff tournaments. Our sponsorships were also at an all-time high in early January. We developed new educational programs, awards, and member benefits. We had a ton of momentum, and then the world changed. Despite the resulting financial challenges to our association and to all of you, we look to the future with confidence because we do have an exciting game, and we do have amazing people, and we do have strong leadership. We understand and embrace the responsibilities as the caretakers of our sport. We choose hope. And the sense of connection and community you felt from the NFCA throughout 2020 will be there in 2021 as well. Think back to how you feel when you have a good game after a win. If you're anything like me, you feel a little bit of relief, a whole lot of happiness, and excited about the next one. You relive the biggest moments of the game, and you also think about what you can do to get better. I hope you leave this virtual convention with these same feelings. So until we play again, and until we meet again, believe that the best is yet to come for our sport. It is an honor to serve as your executive director, sending positive vibes to you all. Enjoy the convention and thank you. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us at the 2020 NFCA convention. I know we all wish we could be together in a ballroom in Dallas right now, collaborating in the hallways or walking through the exhibit hall and seeking out opportunities to meet new people or to be inspired. But for the next three days, the magic will happen on your computer screen. So on behalf of the NFCA and all the coaches in our association, welcome to the convention. I'll start off with a little bit of a pep talk, something I say to my team all the time. You get what you give. And for the next three days, I challenge you to find a way to catch up with that colleague you haven't chatted with for a while. Reach out to that new coach in your area or in your conference. Ask about what your friends have figured out about best practices relative to our new normal. Do it with a text, a call, or FaceTime, and a cheers. And let's think about how we can reconnect in the coming week and find ways to be inspired and get better. Speaking of giving, since I was 23 years old, this organization has been instrumental in providing me personally with what I thought I needed, sometimes what I didn't know I needed, to grow into a profession and build some really impactful relationships along the way. It was through the NFCA that I first witnessed what a gem Sharon Drysdale is, and it opened the door for me to learn from one of the very best, now Drysdale's family. I jumped at the chance to run for president because I wanted to serve the organization and give back to a group that has impacted my experience with coaching in such a positive way. So back in January, I started to understand how the NFCA works and how all the little things happen behind the scenes and then COVID hit. And I'm gonna take a minute or two right now to say very directly, I am in awe of our NFCA staff. The business model that's in place, the business model that has been sustained through this tough time, the adaptability, the creativity of our staff, the commitment and the selflessness of each individual who stepped up in so many different ways. I'm in awe. Our group in Louisville, they're gamers and their commitment to serve our sport and to serve us as coaches has been really inspiring. If we were all in the room together, I'd like to think that we would all, we would have a few thousand people get on their feet and give a big standing ovation to them. So well done. Speaking of giving, so many of you listening right now stepped up and supported our group by donating your time, your expertise, and in some cases money to keep the NFCA operating at our championship level. 
So I want to take a minute on behalf of the NFCA to thank you for your greatest investment in our association. This year has certainly been an interesting one. I have a daughter, Ellis, who just turned seven, and I signed her up to play softball last year. Uh, now, this wasn't a forced thing. I'm not that parent. Um, but the one thing I did insist on is that I wasn't going to be her coach. I was going to be a fan. I was going to be that mom who sat on a blanket down the line with plenty of snacks, perhaps a cooler, and really enjoy the game. And it was Carol who first said, yeah, right. You're not going to coach your daughter or you're just going to let someone else teach her how to play the game. But she was in pretty good hands. I, I did some recruiting and Ellis's coaches were Eileen Candy and Garland Cooper, two former All-Americans who I now consider good friends. And they also had daughters on the team. And we named the team the Butterflies. So picture this. In our part of Illinois, outside of Chicago, we've had very strict COVID protocol since the beginning of the pandemic. At our first practice, everyone has a mask on. They're physically distanced at all times. We have cones where they can stand. One parent's in the dugout with Clorox wipes, madly wiping everything in sight, every bat, every ball, catcher's gear. We have another parent who's squirting hand sanitizer every time you walk by. So as you can imagine, this is a very different experience than when we were first introduced to the game. There were no high fives, no huddles, no snacks in the dugout. But the butterflies didn't care. They simply loved playing the game. They loved running around with their friends, learning new cheers. Honestly, I think we made maybe three or four defensive outs the entire season. But when we did, it was a party. Game day was the best day of the week. For those of you wondering, I lasted all of two innings on the blanket down the line. I guess I'm not a good, very good fan. Um, but watching the butterflies, it was at that moment that I realized that the game is asking an awful lot of us right now, the game of softball and the game of life. I can't remember the last time I said, well, that was easy, or when something took a less time than I thought it would. But let's stay the course. Let's keep giving. The young girls and women who we are leading are looking for us to show them how to do hard things, teach them how to do it, show them how to do it with grace, compassion, and even a smile. So whether you're teaching a six-year-old how to run a first base and take a left, or if you're trying to solve the puzzle of recruiting right now and trying to find that right fit for your 22 who's played in front of only a handful of coaches for the last year, or you're working diligently to preserve the field of 64 teams at the NCAA tournament while picturing a packed, newly renovated Hall of Fame stadium, or even better, you're doing everything in your power to bring home that gold medal from Japan. Keep giving. When your players see you, they get to do their favorite thing. When they see you, it's game day and it's their best day of the week. So with that, I wish you all the best of luck in 2021 and let's have a great convention.